we give God glory on this evening as we celebrate God in spirit and in truth and give thanks. We thank you for joining New Calvary Baptist virtual worship on this Wednesday night as we prepare our hearts and minds and spirits to give God glory on tomorrow. We just want to make sure that we are focusing our attention on the idea of gratitude. The 100th Psalm reads as follows. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before his with singing with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. This is the part. Enter into his courts with thanksgiving. Enter into his courts with praise. Give thanks unto him and praise his holy name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Let us pray our prayer of invocation. Gracious God, how we love you. We thank you for being a keeper. We thank you for being a mind regulator. We thank you for being a sustainer. God, we thank you for just being God all by yourself. Have your way in this worship experience, oh God, that we'll be able to see you even more clearly as we leave this space, but never your presence. It's in the marvelous, the magnificent, and miracle-working name of Jesus Christ, our healer, our redeemer, our helper, and our friend that we pray. Let all of God's children say amen, amen, and amen. Let us worship God in spirit and in truth on tonight.
on tonight, as is, our, as is our custom here at the New Calvary Baptist Church, we are going to have a prayer of gratitude or thanksgiving. And as you all are tuning in, we definitely want you to type into your uh, feed what it is that you are thankful or what it is that you're grateful for. However, because we are a church that believes in social justice and liberation gospel and we want to empower people beyond where they currently are, we want to take a moment to discuss the difference between thankfulness and gratitude. You see, beloved, in the Oxford Dictionary, thanksgiving or being thankful is actually what it is that you do when you are pleased to receive something. And interestingly enough, gratefulness is showing appreciation for acts of kindness. Although we oftentimes use them interchangeably, the reality of the matter is thankfulness is a feeling where gratefulness is an action. I'm thankful for what you have done for me, but I show my thankfulness through my gratitude and action. So when I stretch my hands to give you glory, God, that's my gratitude in showing. However, when I'm thankful for what you've done for me, that is me being the recipient of your grace and your mercy. So as we prepare for this moment of prayer, we ask the question, what are you thankful for? And in answering the question, what you are thankful for, the next question is, how then do you show your gratitude? We're grateful to you, O oh God. And because you're, we're grateful, we lift up our voices to you. That would be an example. In all of your awesomeness, that I'm thankful that you extend brand new graces and mercies toward me each and every day. That's an example. We ask at this moment that you tap into, type into your tagline those things that you're thankful for and how you position yourself to show gratitude. Let every heart pray. All wise and eternal creator, the giver of every good and perfect gift, all that is and was and is to come. We come before you tonight, oh God, just to say thank you. Thank you, oh God, because you continue to keep us amidst the pandemic. Thank you, oh God, because you still show us value even amidst the devaluing of brown and black bodies all over this country. Thank you, oh God, because even with the lack, you still have a way of being a provisional providing God. God, we come before you to say thank you because last night wasn't our last night and you woke us up with your finger of love and touched us with grace and mercy so that we could see a brand new day, a day that we've never seen before, and a day that we'll never see again. So for that, God, we have a posture of gratitude. God, right now we stretch out our hands to you in omission to how awesome you are. God, we lift up our voices to you on tonight, oh God, so that you can hear our guttural response of how grateful we are are for all that you do and you continue to do on our behalf. God, we want to give you a posture of praise so we bow our heads as humble as we know how just to say thank you. Thank you for being the lily of the valley. Thank you for being the bright and morning star. Thank you for being a God that makes a way out of no way. Thank you for being Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Thank you for being Jehovah Nisi. Thank you for being Jehovah Shalom, that peace that passeth all understanding. Thank you because beside you, God, there is no other. And we'll be forever grateful for all that you continue to do on each and every one of our behalves. God, we ask right now, in this season that you touch us from heart to heart and breast to breast. Focus us on God, on you, so that we will be reminded like was told to us on last Sunday that no matter what it is we're facing, we're still grateful. We're still thankful, oh God, no matter what it may look like to the persons on the outside, no matter what it may feel like to us in our hearts, we're thankful because we know that it could have been another way. God, we thank you for your healing power. God, we thank you for your provisional power. 
God, we thank you for being a God of justice and a God of truth, giving us the ability to speak truth to power no matter what the situations are that we're facing. God, we thank you for allowing us to be mouthpieces of justice, oh God, everywhere that we go. Have your way in our hearts and our minds and in our spirits on tonight, oh God, so that no matter what it is we're facing, we will never lose the spirit of gratitude and that we will continue to hold on to hearts of thanksgiving because we know we don't deserve any of it. But because you continue to give it to us, oh God, we'll be forever and eternally grateful. God, we thank you for the angel of this house. We thank you for his teaching spirit. We thank you for his loving kindness. We thank you for his pastoral heart. God, we thank you for the anointing that you shed on him way back before he was even formed in his mother's womb. And for that, God, we are grateful because we have received the benefit of your anointing and your power through the angel of this house in the person of the Reverend Dr. William Marcus Small. Continue to lift him up and gird him up on every leaning side as he is doing what many preachers are having to do in this season, as lead a congregation through a pandemic. God, minister to the places where he needs you the most, oh God. And then, oh God, allow him to continue to go where it is you called him to go. Allow him to continue to go into the deep, stretch out into the far reaches, and continue to give him the insight and the direction that you granted to him years and years ago. God, we thank you for every family of the New Calvary Baptist Church. Allow us to feel your presence even the more. Although we can't meet like we used to, although we can't assemble like we used to, we still serve a God that has bound us together by the blood. So God, we thank you for the blood. We thank you for the blood that your son shed on Calvary, oh God. We thank you for the blood because the songwriter reminds us that the blood is still works. And God, the songwriter said that it reaches the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley and it'll never lose its power. So God, we thank you for the blood. God, we just come with stretched arms to say thank you. God, help us to receive whatever it is we need on tonight. And we don't want to receive it selfishly, oh God, but we want to receive it so that we can continue to do kingdom building all over this world. Touch those persons that reach out and are partners of New Calvary Baptist Church virtually. Those who have never even been in the space of the New Calvary Baptist Church physical building, but have connected to us via the social media platforms. God, stretch your loving arms of grace and mercy all over the cyber world, oh God, so that the far reaches of this universe will be able to hear the salvific power of your love and your grace divine. We'll be forever mindful to give your name all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. It is in the marvelous and magnificent and miracle-working name of Jesus Christ, our liberator, our healer, our brother, and our friend that we pray. All of God's children said, amen, amen, and amen.
how grateful we are to share and to worship tonight, to give God glory and praise for all that God has done, for we recognize in this moment how good God is. We thank God for you in this moment of thanksgiving. Thank God for your uh, being here to share with us tonight. Hope and pray that everything is being done. Hope and pray that everything is getting done and worked out, uh, particularly according to your plan tomorrow. We hope that you are being safe. I uh, hope that you are being particularly careful tomorrow uh, as you uh, prepare to share in Thanksgiving. And hopefully in this season, it gives us a, diff a few different ideas of what it means to share Thanksgiving this year due to pandemic and being creative in different ways that we have to do it. But we are indeed grateful uh, to share and worship tonight. Grateful for this awesome choir who has blessed us. Grateful for uh, their uh, a powerful, powerful ministry and blessing us tonight. Thank God for them coming out and sharing with us. Thank God for prayer. Thank God for our executive pastor. Uh, amen. Reverend Harris, as he continues just to lead us, uh, amen, in prayer on today. I want to call your attention to, uh, as we prepare uh, to reflect in this moment, not going to hold you long. Uh, sometimes it doesn't, it doesn't take long to say thank you. You just need to be deliberate. Amen. And so we're going to uh, call your attention to Psalm 40. Psalm 40 in verse 5. Psalm 40, 40 in verse 5. Verse 5 of Psalm number 40. 40 division of Psalms number verse 5. It says, many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done. The things you plan for us None can compare with you. Were I, were I to speak and tell of your deeds, there would be too many to declare. Just one verse. Here it is in the New International Version of Psalm number 40. Many, Lord my God, are the wonders you have done. The things you plan for us, none can compare with you. Were I to speak and tell of your deeds, there would be too many to declare. And I just want to talk for a while from this thought as we uh, offer our thanksgiving on tonight from this idea, too many reasons, just too many reasons. God, we love you and we're grateful for blessing us, grateful tonight for your many blessings. We're grateful for the ability to come out tonight and to share tonight and to be touched by your spirit. So God, have your way. Continue to minister to us, with us, through us, and in all things, we give you praise, honor, and glory. Bless this your instrument for your goodness, that I might decrease as thou increases, and that the glory of the Lord may be revealed, that all of us might see it together. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of thy grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and let my will be lost in thine. It is in the wonderful, marvelous, and majestic name of Jesus that the people of God who love God together say amen and amen. Too many reasons. Amen. We just think of the many reasons. We gather here tonight to share in this Thanksgiving service. There are things that we need to consider. Uh, we need to consider um, that when we are saying thank you, we are not just showing our appreciation, but the thank you is a recognition also for the work it took to get where we are. Um, let, me, let me explain what I mean. That there were spaces that I needed something to happen. There were spaces where I needed a shift. There were spaces where I needed a change or I needed some help. I needed an opportunity. And I soon discovered was that the thing that I needed, I couldn't do it by myself. And so I struggled and I struggled and I struggled. And when I still couldn't do it, but when I had a moment when God showed up, God did for me what I wasn't otherwise able to do by my own effort. So I just don't thank God for what was done. I thank God for the understanding that there was some effort that was put in that would not have amounted to much if it had not been for God's hand in the middle of it all. That we recognize that there was a struggle or that there was a place where we were trying to move that God recognized and stepped in and did something with our effort. And all I'm trying to say, beloved, is that you can thank God for the way of simply recognizing for who God is. 
for who God has begun, who as God has been, and who God and what God has continued to deliver. In fact, there are so many ways that God has delivered that we could sometimes lose track to what God has done. We can get so wrapped up and headed uh, to the next thing that we can forget what the Lord has already done with us. Tell you what I mean. I remember a time when my children were younger, so many Christmases ago, when my children would come downstairs and they would see all the toys or the gifts underneath the tree. And I noticed that they would rip open one thing, look at it for a minute, and then rip open the next thing. They would go to the next thing very, very quickly and rip it open. I noticed that they never took time to not only rip open to see what it was, but they never took time to unpack what was in the container. They just went on to the next thing, which made me think that how busy we are in this life unwrapping the blessings that God gives us that we rarely take time to unpack what God gives us and show our thanks for what God has done. We forget how to say thank you because there's so many blessings that come our way. We forget to say thank you because we're ready to run on to the next thing without acknowledging that God really worked it out for us in the first thing. That when you think about it, we shouldn't glance over what God gives us. We shouldn't make light of the things that God has done. We should take time to acknowledge the goodness of the Lord in our lives. Because like I said before, we wouldn't be here without it. That sometimes we got to take a minute to show that we are thankful and that we're grateful for what the Lord has done before we run to the next thing. We just can't glance over our blessings because if we think about it, there are too many reasons to be thankful. We got to think about it. There are too many reasons that we can bless the Lord. There are too many reasons that we can show our appreciation for what the Lord has done. And so come on the journey with me this, te this text real fast. I promise I won't keep you long. I know you got some greens on that need to get addressed. So real quick, here it is. We'll take this time. One of the reasons that we're thankful uh, for the so many reasons is because God keeps on showing up in the miraculous. God keeps on showing up in miraculous ways. Watch this. David, the writer in this psalm, does a few things with this particular melody. In fact, I like to call it the tempered appreciation. The song of tempered appreciation. Tell you what I mean. David starts off in the psalm with recognition of who God is and what God has done. Look at what he said. I waited patiently for the Lord, and he turned and heard my cry. Uh, David shares this psalm as a testimony to what took place in the rough patches in his life. He says, things were bad, but I waited. In fact, David says, I waited patiently. The translation is actually, I waited and I waited, which means David is saying, I really waited for the Lord to show up. That David is suggesting it wasn't easy, but through it all, God has heard his cry. And when David talks about the places that God brings him out of, you can tell that David is really thankful that God showed up. Look at the testimony through the song. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. David said there's some places that I shouldn't have made it out of. Uh, there were some places that I shouldn't have come through. There were some places that would have been my last stop. But because God is so good I've been taken out of those places I've been moved to different places and I realize how far I've come. David says I've been here when people didn't think I would be here uh, David says I'm building when people were saying I should have been torn down David says I'm winning when there were people who always saw me losing and now all I know is that it's all due to what the Lord has done for me. So when we get to our verse 5, our preaching text for tonight, he says many, O Lord my God, are the wonders you have done. David is saying you keep on showing up in the most miraculous ways. God took the problem and turned it into a positive. God took a plan for my destruction and turned it into a detour for me to grow. God took a strategy of the enemy and turned it into a stairway of possibility for me. In fact, God is the only one that can take something that looks fatal and find enough inside of it to turn it into a future. I need to say that again. God is the only one that can take something fatal and see enough in it and turn it around and turn it into a future. Now, don't that just blow your mind when you think of the miraculous ways God continues to move? The way God shows up blows David's mind. There are some places that he didn't think God would show up, but he 
did. There's some places where David thought that God, this would be his end, but God made a way for him. There were some battles that David went through and God brought him out. God just keeps on blowing David's mind. That's all the miraculous is, you know. The miraculous is a moment that you cannot produce by yourself. It's a time that you did not create. The miraculous is a God move in a human moment. It's what happens to blow your mind. Just think about it. Aren't you glad that there are some places that you could tell the Lord thank you for the miraculous things that God has done? Aren't there some places when you think about it, God just blows your mind? Aren't there some moments when you knew things did not look good, but all of a sudden things worked out and you knew it was nothing but God being God's miraculous self? One of the reasons you say thank you is because God keeps on showing up in the miraculous. God keeps on acting in the miraculous. God, we say thank you because God has done the same thing for you that you couldn't have done for yourself. You say thank you because when you look back over it all, you know that there are some wonders that God has performed that have left your mouth open, that have left you speechless, that have left tears running down your face because you knew it was nobody but the Lord working it out on your behalf. Can you just think of a moment where God blew your mind? Can you just think of a moment where God literally blew your wig back and you said, I knew that was nobody but God and I'm thankful for all God is doing. Yeah, you got to understand, uh, David says he's grateful. He got too many reasons to be thankful because God keeps showing up in the miraculous. But here, here's the second thing real quick. I promise I ain't going to be long. I know you got that stuff on the stove. So here it is. He says the reason to be thankful is because God's grace just can't be matched. God's grace just can't be matched. I don't care how you try. God's grace can't be met with anything in our world. J D David says, God turned it around for me. God turned it around for me. He lifted me. He set my feet. He gave me a place. God did it. And God did it in some unthinkable places. God did it in some places where nobody else thought it would happen. But God's power is unbelievable. God's majesty just blows my mind. That's what David is saying. But David keeps on going in verse 5. He said, the things you plan for us, no one can recount in you. In other words, the way you plan things out for us, nobody else would be able to do that. I translated that real quick. That's the William Marcus Small translation. The way you do things, can't nobody else do it like that. The way you do it, can't nobody else would think of doing it that way. There's no way anyone would be able to see the outcome by the way you start off. That's what he's saying. He's saying there's no way anybody who could see the outcome based on it, the way it starts out, other than you. That's what makes you God. There's no way uh, to see how you can deliver us from the way things look. That, that, that's what makes you God. There's no way that we could think of how you could make things are going to go well and all of a sudden things shift. That's what makes you God. No way you could see this problem and this mess and all this mayhem and confusion and bring out of it a blessing. That's what makes you God. Can't nobody do or see the way you can see. No way could we take what the doctor says and then turn it around and all of a sudden it's cancer free. There's no way you could see growing up in a family and turning it around to make a life for yourself. There's no way that you could see trouble on every side and victory is still in the ending. That's what God would be able to work out, the stuff that we cannot see. God can't be compared. That's all David is trying to say because God takes what is looked at and sees something else in it. God sees what's, what it is and sees something else in it. That's where there's a reason to be thankful because God never gives up on the situation. That's where there's reason to be thankful because God never gives up on us. God just keeps on shaping. He just keeps on making room. God just keeps on molding. And whether other folks can see it or not, God takes it and does more with it. Don't miss this because God has done so much for David. He has come to understand that David has come to understand that it's better not to rush what God has, but to wait to receive what God has. I went too fast, I need to do it again. David says, since you've been so good to me, 
since you've been so marvelous, since you've done so much, that when I look back and I see the things that I couldn't have worked out for myself that you worked out, what happens is I'm going to trust you with it. I'm not going to rush you. I'm going to wait to receive it because I know it's going to be better than what I would have done. Some of y'all still ain't getting it. If I rush, I can mess up what God is trying to get to me. So instead of rushing, I'm going to wait to see what God is going to send my way because whatever it is, it's going to be better than anything I could have put together or made up on my own. Uh, you know, is anybody in here can declare that I'm, wait, I'm willing to wait on God and receive what God has for me? I'm not interested in rushing. I'm going to wait to see so I can receive it. I guess, I guess, you know, that's why I'm a fan of Basquiat. I guess that's why I'm a fan of Basquiat. Uh, I can't afford it, but I'm a fan of Basquiat. Those of you who don't know, Jean-Michel Basquiat is an artist um, in the 80s and 90s. Basquiat, also known as Samo, uh, was an artist who was known for his expressionist work. A young brother who would take things, he died early, but he was a young brother, he would take stuff and he would make art with it. He would take a trash can lid, and all of a sudden it would become art. He would take paper, umbrellas broken, and he would turn them into pieces of art. In fact, some of his work right now goes up to $110 million. Now, that's not what fascinates me. The money don't fascinate me. It's what he sees in the material. See, there's something that Basquiat used to see in the stuff he was using that other people found was ordinary. Other people said it was business as usual, it was old or discarded, but to the artist's eye, he could create something that other people could not see. The artist had that kind of eye to see what other people missed. The artist had the ability to take what was run down, to take what was forgotten about, to take what was dirty or used up or given out to somebody else, and he could turn it and give it another life and turn it into a masterpiece. Some of y'all still think I'm talking about Basquiat, but I'm talking about the other artist whose plan doesn't seem to make sense until the picture becomes clear. I'm talking about the artist that doesn't care what kind of material it is that that artist can still look at it, see something in it and turn it into a masterpiece. I'm talking about the artist who can still see the gift and the beauty in it even when other people say it's useless or when it's over. I'm thankful beloved because the master artist still sees more than I ever expected. I'm thankful because the artist saw something that I'm missing. I'm thankful because the great artist keeps on working when other folks say it's over that there's a testimony in your life that can declare that when other folks gave up on it and other folk threw it away or other people said it was over aren't you glad that God saw something else in it God saw some more in it God saw some power in it and God made a masterpiece out of your mess God made a masterpiece out of the stuff that you were dealing with I'm thankful that God sees the stuff that we can't see I'm thankful because God still works in the miraculous but I'm thankful because God still shows up uh, and God's grace is unmatched. But finally, last but not least, I'm thankful, and there's too many reasons, but another reason I'm thankful is God's possibilities are beyond measure. See, David says, when you plan, no one could have planned it. The way you plan it, nobody could have done it, God. The way you worked it out, the way you weaved that thing together, nobody could have done that. There's no way anybody could have seen that coming. That's the part that blows my mind. In fact, God is so mind-blowing. Watch this. In fact, God is so mind-blowing that there's no limit to how God can blow your mind. Y'all missed that. Because God is so mind-blowing, there's no limit to how God can blow your mind. Am I going too fast? Okay, here it is. Uh, look at the last part of verse 5. Were I to speak and tell of them, meaning the good things, they would be too many to declare. You missed it. A good shout. Y'all missed a good shout. Where I'd have speak and tell of the good things, meaning where I'd have speak of the things and the ways that you show up. If I would have just to keep naming the ways that you keep performing, if I would have just mentioned the ways that you keep answering and doing things, it would be too many to declare. David says, I don't have enough energy. 
and brain power to think about the ways that you show up and the ways that you bless. <laughs> David says, if I literally tried to think of the ways that you showed up, if I literally tried to count the ways that you blessed my life, I would not only run out of fingers and toes, I would run out of hairs on my head, I'd run out of words, I'd run out of brain power. I couldn't do it because there are too many reasons to recognize what the Lord has done. See, I'm not getting this. David is saying, even when things look bad, I still got too many reasons to thank you. Even when things aren't going the way I think they should go, I still got too many reasons to give you thanks. When I don't have a chance or everything looks like a long shot, I still got too many reasons to thank you because when I think about what God has done, when I think about only the places where the Lord has blessed me, when the places that the Lord has kept me, when the places the Lord has spared me, when the Lord made a way for me, when the Lord directed me, when the Lord stopped me, when the Lord corrected me, when the Lord redirected me, when the Lord opened it up for me, when the Lord closed it for me, when the Lord did it for me, when the Lord stopped it from doing it, when the Lord answered yes, when the Lord answered no when the Lord did what nobody else could do. I just can't keep track of all of it because there are too many reasons that God deserves my thank you. So I know, I know what it is. I know what it is, beloved. I know that it's been this kind of year. I know what kind of year it's been. I know it hasn't been the best year, but I still got too many reasons to say thank you because I got too many reasons for what the Lord has done. I know it doesn't always go the way you want it to go, but you got too many reasons to tell the Lord thank you for what the Lord has already done for you. Aren't you glad that God's grace can outlast your grief, that the Lord's power is stronger than your problem, that God's spirit is greater than your struggle? I just get tired when I think about the Lord working it out for me. Sometimes I lose count of all of the blessings that God has and showing up in my life. Sometimes I just get exhausted when I think of the times that God has blessed my situation. Sometimes my brain gets weary when I think of the trouble that the Lord has brought me out of. Sometimes tears run down my face when I think of the grace that God has extended to my life and tears just keep flowing. Sometimes I I just can't help but shout all by myself when I lose count of the blessings that God gives me. And I wonder if there's anybody who can declare that when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, the goodness of the Lord, the blessings of God, the way he shows up, I just lose count and I got too many reasons to bless the Lord. I got too many reasons. You got too many reasons to bless the Lord. So tonight, hold this Thanksgiving, pre-Thanksgiving celebration. I just want you to think about the places God has blessed you in. Because when you think, T-H-I-N-K, you ain't got no choice but to thank T-H-A-N-K, the Lord for all that the Lord has done for you. When you think for what God has done, You've got no choice but to thank how God is moving. So right tonight, right tonight, we want to give you opportunity to be thankful. We want to give you opportunity to be thankful. Just, just take a moment and look back over your life. Just take a moment to reflect and process what God is doing. And we say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us. Thank you for keeping us. In all things, we're grateful. And all things, we appreciate everything you've done. We know we could get full of ourselves sometimes. We know that we could rush to the next blessing without saying thank you. But God, we just take this moment to process, to literally thank you. If nothing else, God, we thank you that we've made it this far. So thank you, God, for continuing to be God. Thank you, God, for continuing to show up. Thank you, God for continuing to lead us. And we promise we will give your name the praise, the honor, and the glory as you continue to watch over us as we go forward in this life. So as we prepare to depart from this place, we continue to recognize, God, that we could not do anything without you. So continue just to lead us that as we even celebrate on tomorrow, However we celebrate, what we're asking, God, is we get you keep us safe. That you keep us all, God, safe from hurt, harm, and danger. 
that if we don't see our families on tomorrow, bless them wherever they are. And we pray that you would keep them safe. Watch over them, God, in all things. As we give you praise, honor, and glory, we are grateful for what you're doing, grateful for what you've done, grateful for this opportunity to worship together, grateful for just one time to say thank you. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord place God's countenance upon you and give you peace both now and forevermore. And the people of God together say amen, amen, and amen. Listen, y'all be careful. Y'all be careful. Y'all watch out. Listen, don't eat too much. Amen. Don't eat too much tomorrow, but make sure you share and fellowship. Reach out to your family wherever they are. Let them know that they are loved. Let them know that you are thinking and considering them. We pray, God, for your safety until we fellowship with each other on this Sunday at 11 a.m. We look forward to giving you glory. We'll see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself and each other. Be good. Peace.